Hello, darling. Like a bit of fun? <laughs>
One and two, Gulf. What? One and two. Oh, yes, right. Oh, it's Rupert's round, actually. Rupert? Rupert, old boy. It's one and two. I do believe this damn whore's lifted my purse. What are you talking about? We'll have to find it, won't we? Come on, up and over with her. something about you and your pub, about what's going on upstairs, huh? What did you say? Nothing, Mr. Steiner. I didn't say nothing. Honest, Mr. Steiner. <laughs> you keep that big mouth of yours shut, will you? And so I'll maybe have you carved. <laughs> have me carved, will you? Like you did poor Emma Smith? Didn't think I knew, did you? Wouldn't the coppers? Oh! You don't scare me, Steiner. I'll have you. I'll have you! Dick! Hey, Dick. Take over, I'm going out. Mrs. Hudson, where have you put my confounded tobacco? Have you looked in your violin case, Mr. Holmes? Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. My God. A member of the medical profession caught red-handed, Dr. Watson. Hmm? What? Your indignation implies a degree of familiarity. My dear Holmes, you cannot think that I am familiar with a maniac who meets a woman in the street and stabs her again and again in Whitechapel? What was the name of this unfortunate prostitute? Uh, Polly Nichols. How did you know she was a prostitute? Where have I put my damn pipe? Uh, how do you know, Holmes? You haven't seen a newspaper. You have been reading the stop press of the third edition of the Times, printed at 3.30 a.m. Therefore, the news must have come in at about 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. As Polly Nichols was murdered in the street, it is unlikely that her body remained undiscovered for long. So, I deduce that it happened at about one o'clock in the morning. Very interesting. But it still doesn't explain how you knew she was a prostitute. No respectable woman would be out alone in the streets of Whitechapel at such an hour. Therefore, she was not a respectable woman. You make it seem so simple. Uh, Holmes, uh, there was an identical murder of a woman in Whitechapel just three days ago. Ah, a second murder. Mm. Now, that is interesting. Why? Because it is the second murder. And now, if you wouldn't mind standing up, my dear fellow. Stand up? What for? 
It is a well-known maxim of mine that when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the solution. And? Therefore, you are sitting on my pipe. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Elementary, my dear Watson. And now, Whitechapel. Move on there now, go on. Watch it, Kathy. Had any luck? Not a bloody one. I don't know what's the matter with the men these days. Couldn't lend us the price of a bed for the night, could you? I've been slung out me room. It's only four. I haven't even earned the old man's beer money yet. He's sitting at home with his tongue hanging out. He's dying for me to get off. Ha <laughs> ha! Old cow. Don't you call me an old cow. thrown out me place. Yeah? What for? I knocked her for the rent. Ah, uh, never mind. You also have to find somewhere else. Well, I need some money first. Hey, you don't fancy for Penneth, do you? I'm cutting the price tonight. Sorry, Annie. Don't fancy it tonight. Yeah, what about you, love? You don't fancy cuddling something live for a change, do you? Chunky? Yes, Annie? You can have it for nothing if you want to. I'm feeling real lonely tonight, Chunky. Nah, no thanks, love. I'm too busy, honest. Oh. Oh, well. Here, you mind you don't let that knife slip.
Professor Lestrade. Here, I found something. No. Annie Chapman's purse was found with her body. Police baffled. Jack the Ripper vanished into thin air. I say, Holmes, these are just the circumstances when the desperate authorities come running to Baker Street, eh? They're here, but not running, Watson. The person who rang the bell does not desire entry, is not in a hurry. In fact, he is deliberately slow. He? Now, how can you possibly tell it was not a woman's hand on the bell? The British postman is not a woman, Watson. A parcel for you, Mr. Holmes. Incredible, Holmes. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. Postmarked Whitechapel. Ah, surgical instruments. Now, who could have sent those? Which instrument is missing? Oh, the large scalpel. The post-mortem knife. Hmm. There is no greater satisfaction for an investigator, Watson, than to have a theory confirmed. Well, does the case tell you anything, Holmes? Start with the obvious. These instruments belong to a medical man who has descended to hard times. I would hardly call that obvious. The instruments of one's trade are always the last things to be pawned. But how do you know they were pawned? Observe this fleck of white. Silver polish. No surgeon would ever clean his instruments with silver polish. They've been treated like common cutlery by someone concerned only with their appearance. This is substantiated by these chalk marks. They relate to the pawn ticket number. But they were stolen from a doctor and then pawned. Hmm? The pawnbroker had thought they were stolen. He would never have displayed them in a window. The shop faces south in a narrow street. And business is bad. I should also add that the pawnbroker is a foreigner. Oh, but I cannot see how you... On the contrary, you see everything but observe nothing. Observe how the material has faded here. The sun has touched the inside of the case only when at its height and able to shine over the roofs of the buildings opposite. Hence, the shop is in a narrow street facing south. And business had to be bad for the case to remain undisturbed for so long. But how can you possibly tell that the pawnbroker was foreign? The seven in the pledge number is crossed in the continental manner. You will also observe the writing of the address, Watson. Scrawled with difficulty. The writing of a woman who seldom puts pen to paper. A woman, you say? Undoubtedly a female hand. Ah, but I'm slow, Watson. This case has more secrets to tell us. Oh, my tweezers. The velvet on the lid is of a different texture. It has been added recently. Coat of arms of an elder son of a duke. Quickly, Watson, my Burke's peerage. Yes. This way, gentlemen. His Grace will be with you in a moment. Thank you. I owe the dubious pleasure of this visit. No doubt you will recognize this coat of arms, Your Grace. Where did you get this case? I believe it to have come from a Whitechapel pawn shop, sir. Pawn shop? No more than I predicted for him. <clears throat> for whom, sir? My elder son, Michael. 
Do you know his present address? He is dead. Oh. Of what accident or sickness, Your Grace? Disobedience. From the day he left this house against my wishes, he has been dead, sir. You mean disowned, Your Grace? Was he a doctor, Your Grace? No, sir, but that was his ridiculous ambition. Well, the medical profession is, I believe, an honorable one. To a certain class, but not to one of the Osborne family. To a man who, in God's good time, would have become the 10th Duke of Shires. Any trade must be dishonorable. A trade, sir? Now, if you please. The servants will show you out. Pompous ass. Did not my Burke's peerage say there were two sons, Watson? Yes. Quick, give me the instrument case. Oh, oh dear. Me. Allow me. This, this belongs to Michael. Where is he? I'm afraid I don't know. Lord... Lord Carfax. Sherlock Holmes. This is my colleague, Dr. Watson. Delighted. What are you doing with my brother's instruments? They came into my possession this morning in a most singular fashion. We've just been to see your father, but unfortunately... My father is still very bitter about Michael. When did you last see your brother? Two years ago. He went to study at the Sorbonne in Paris. These instruments were my own present to him. He wrote a couple of letters and then... You tried to trace him? I went over to Paris, but he'd left the university in mid-term and returned to England. And since then, you've heard nothing from him? No. No. Or seen him? Of course not. Thank you. Good day to you, Lord Carfax. Come, Watson. May I? Good day. Whitechapel, cabby. Yes, sir. Why Whitechapel, Holmes? To find a pawn shop. It can be no coincidence that those instruments were sent to me after the murder of the third prostitute. A woman wishes to interest me in these crimes. And I find that provocative. shop in a narrow street facing south. And observe, Watson, a foreign name. Uncanny. Gentlemen, can I help you? I want some information on an article you had in your possession for some months. No, no, I don't think... Come, Mr. Beck. Your face reacts faster than your brain. You remember very well. I would like to know who pawned this case of surgical instruments. But who are you to come here and demand information? Sherlock Holmes. Now, who pledged this case? The pawn ticket number was 872. Well, uh, the name uh, given to me was uh, Osborne. Osborne? But that's the name that... Angela Osborne. Did the lady leave an address? Her lady. It's two years ago. Yes. 
The Montagu Street Hostel. It's a soup kitchen run by Dr. Murray. And when did you sell this case? A few days ago. Yes, 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 it was uh, last Saturday. Ah, the night of the... F the night of what, sir? <laughs> to whom did you sell it? A man. Never saw him before. And the missing instrument, was that in the case when you sold it? Oh, yes, yes, I think it was. You are sure? Of course I am. <laughs> I have reason to assume a connection between this case of surgical instruments and your local murders, Mr. Beck. Murders? But you don't think I've any... <laughs> that slander! Talk like that can get you suit. No, sir! Talk like that can get you hanged. Accessory before the fact. Supplying a weapon for murder, Mr. Beck. A very good day to you, sir. Holmes! Where are you in such a hurry to get to? To examine the body of Annie Chapman. The girl who was murdered last night, what for? To confirm that the instrument of mutilation was a surgeon's scalpel. Lestrade. Mr. Holmes, what are you doing here? Our good fortune, Watson. Oh. Inspector Lestrade to help us through the morass of officialdom. Oh, I don't know about that, Mr. Holmes. What did you want? To look at the body of Miss Annie Chapman. Ah, I'm sorry. Out of the question. Very well, Lestrade. I will not argue. But I was hoping to be able to assist you to prevent the fourth murder. But come, Watson. Uh, just a moment. Mr. Holmes, what makes you think that he is going to do it again? I think he will, Lestrade. I think he will. Oh. All right. May I? My God. Could a human being have done this? You see, Watson. We are right in assuming that two weapons were used on this poor creature, Lestrade. Mm -hmm. uh, that's correct, Mr. Holmes, yes. A long bayonet-type knife and a sharper, more meticulous instrument. A razor? Or perhaps a surgeon's scalpel? Uh, I think a scalpel would be more probable. I agree. But you have the advantage of me, sir. You appear to know my name, but I do not believe we've met. I heard your lecture to the Royal Society on forensic medicine. Brilliant, sir. Quite brilliant. My name is Murray. Dr. Murray, you run a soup kitchen in the district. A hostel, next door to here, for the destitute. God knows there's plenty of them in Whitechapel. <laughs> I also overwork as a police surgeon. Did you say a bayonet, Doctor? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yes, a bayonet, without a doubt. Uh, I served my queen as a military surgeon in Afghanistan, Doctor. Oh, I... The idea of a bayonet appeals to you, Lestrade? Well, it narrows things down a bit, doesn't it? Soldiers have bayonets, don't they? And there are plenty of soldiers come down to Whitechapel for a bit of fun with the girls. I would hardly refer to this as fun, Lestrade. No, before you go out and arrest the entire garrison of the Tower of London, you would do well to remember that a scalpel was also used. Ah, yes. Going on your hypothesis, you should also arrest all the doctors as well. No, you can discount the military theory, Lestrade. Well, why should I, Mr. Earl? Because the man who killed this girl would have his clothes covered in her blood. A soldier returning to his barracks would be detected at once. No, Lestrade, look for someone living alone close to the scene of the murders, who can either return quickly to the safety of his own home or bundle his outer clothes into a safe hiding place. Meantime, prepare yourself for more murders. You keep saying that. These are apparently motiveless murders by a deranged mind. Where there is no motive, there is no reason to stop. That's only conjectured, Holmes. All circumstantial evidence is conjecture, Murray, but it is often right. Mr. Holmes is usually right. 221B Baker Street, please, Cabby. Someone should have sent for us before this, Holmes. Someone has. The woman who sent me that instrument case. But then why doesn't she come out into the open? Being a woman, she uses a woman's art. She intrigues us to Whitechapel. There is a small service I would like you to do for me tomorrow, Watson. Yes? 
Visit this hostel of Murray's. Demand an interview with Angela Osborne. They will say she is not there. You will say she is. Create a scene. Create a scene? What do I do then? Then, Watson, you leave, of course. Sing for your supper here. Be told, mate. If you don't sing, I don't give you no grub. Go on. If you don't know the words, just make a noise. You won't get no soup. I did not come here to partake of the soup. God has sent you down his manor. Come on, we'll fit you in somewhere. Will you please stop this unwarranted interest in my diet? I do not want any soup. Can I help you? Oh, yes, I'm sure you can. Oh, uh, sorry. My name is Watson. Uh, Dr. John Watson of Baker Street. I am looking for a woman who is staying here. Her name is Angela Osborne. There's no one of that name here. Oh, but Angela Osborne is here. I am certain of it. Well, I think you'd better speak to my uncle. Mary, this way. Oh, hello, Watson. What are you doing here? You come to help us? Good. Uncle, Dr. Watson is looking for someone called Angela Osborne. I've told him I've never heard of her. Oh, what makes you think this Osborne woman is here? Oh, she gave this hostel as her address in a business transaction. Oh, when? About two years ago. Oh, names mean nothing here, Watson. We've taken a girl occasionally who needs help, but they change their names as often as they change their clothes. No, I can't help you. But she is here. I'm certain of it. And I'm certain she's not. Now, you've seen these people outside. This is their only hospital, and I'm their only doctor. So you'll appreciate that I haven't time to stand here answering questions about lost women. I'll not be put off, Murray. I know that the woman is here, and I demand to see her. Demand as it be damned to you, sir. Will you kindly leave my surgery? Oh, but please, Dr. Watson. Well, you must excuse my uncle. He works even at night. His work is these people. I insist upon seeing Angela Osborne at once. I will not be put off, young lady. Please, Dr. Watson. There is something very wrong here. Everyone's saying they've never heard of Angela Osborne. You haven't seen the last of me, I promise you. I will not rest until I have found out what you have done to this poor, unfortunate girl. You can be sure of that.
What do you think you're doing? Please, I've come to converse, not engage in fisticuffs. Who the devil are you? Sherlock Holmes. You may remember we met yesterday. Sherlock Holmes? Don't you think we'd be more comfortable in here? <laughs> What's all this about, Holmes? How did you get here? I followed this young lady. I saw no one. That is exactly what people may expect to see when I follow them. Uh, may I ask why you followed Miss Young? She rushed out the moment the name Angela Osborne was mentioned, which was just what I expected someone to do. You sent Dr. Watson to the hostel. Don't you think you'd better tell me the whole story, Lord Carfax? It's none of your damn business. Oh, why don't you tell him, Edward? There's nothing to hide. Well, it's as I told you yesterday. I went to Paris and found that my brother Michael had thrown up his studies and returned to England. For weeks, I tried to find him, but... Then one night, a man came to see me. He told me that Michael had married a prostitute. Blackmail. He threatened to tell the papers. <laughs> he was far cleverer than that. He threatened to tell my father. He'd chosen his time well. My father had just suffered a very severe heart attack that very week. Uh, you've met my father, Mr. Holmes. A family name is the meaning of his life. But surely your father is a man of the world? Of the old world. Such a shock would have killed him. So you paid? And are you still? The blackmailer came back three times. I then refused to pay him any more until he told me the whereabouts of my brother and his... that woman he married. He told me that if I visited the hostel the next day that Michael would be waiting for me. And was he waiting for you? No. Uh, but I met Dr. Murray, and uh, I met Miss Young. I told them my story. Michael had been helping Dr. Murray in his surgery. He gave me the address of his lodgings, but when I went round there, I, I found that he'd left. No one has seen or heard of them since. And your blackmailer? He bought himself a tavern, the Angel and Crown. Did you know Michael Osborne, Miss Young? He left just the day before I came to the hostel. It's a wretched story, Holmes. The one good thing about it was that Edward, that is Lord Carfax, became so interested in my uncle's work. It is his money that has kept the hostel going these last few months. When I saw the fight that Dr. Murray was making against the, the poverty and the, the sin in this district, it was the least I could do to try to help. He even bought this house to be near. I'd be grateful if you would mention nothing of this to my father. There is one more thing, Lord Carfax. What branch of medicine was your brother studying? His ambition was to be a surgeon. Things are bad, awfully bad. In fact, they never been worse before. But everything's chappy to make a girly happy. Food is here, rent is here, but love is cheap at a time of year. So grab the nearest miss and whisper while you keep. You mustn't pick and choose. And if you're nice and squeeze a tight, you'll ask your aunt tomorrow night. If you don't mind sitting without a light in these hard times. Farmer Brown came to town, he spent the day at the kennel show, then went to wear his whistle inside the hotel settle. Lady Fair near him there at all her neck and her shoulders bare, said Farmer Brown a lack as he saw her dainty back. These are times You've got to put up with anything In these are times You mustn't pick and choose This fancy kind of dress you wear Leaves all your neck and shoulders bare But you're lucky to be dressed up to there In these are times Mrs. Green, rather mean Went out last Saturday marketing And saw out in the gutter A codfish on a shutter She felt it scum, poked her thumbs All round the fish and she said Oh crumbs, it don't look nice at all Then the coster had to ball In these hard times You've got to put up with anything In these hard times 
comes, you mustn't pick and choose. That codfish there's a sacrifice, and I asked you, man, would you look nice if you had been torpedoed twice in these hard times? Come on, aren't you, girl? Go and get up. Well enough for you to know, like, go and out. My soul, Holmes, I believe you delight in embarrassing me. You invite me to dine and then bring me to a low East End pub. Nonsense, my dear fellow. You'll bring some light into their drab lives. Welcome to the Angel and Crown, gentlemen. This way. Sit down, please. We have always a warm welcome for a guest. So I see. What do you have? Cognac. Here you are, James. Will you join us in a drink, Mr... Steiner, Max Steiner. Dick, a glass. Another bad night. Everyone's scared off the street after dark. And these ladies come in here for safety? <laughs> here is always a selection, if you're so inclined. A selection. Selection. I'll have you know we did not come here for this reason. There's nothing I can do for you then. Indeed there is, Mr. Steiner. What? You can give us some information. Information? What about? About the disappearance of Michael Osborne. What did you say your name was? My name would alarm you, Mr. Steiner. You're a copper. Consulting detective. Though I have my friends at Scotland Yard who would be interested in a blackmailing blackguard like you. You'd better watch what you say. And you had better tell me what I want to know, otherwise my friends will put you in the dock. Who are you? Sherlock Holmes. Been to Lord Carfax, have you? You know Angela Osborne well, I take it. How did you know that? Go on, how did you know? There had to be an accomplice in your blackmail. Compensation, I call it. I could have opened my mouth and collected from the press, or kept it shut and collected from Lord Carfax. I did the nobility of England a service, Mr. Holmes. Lord Carfax compensated me for my loss of business with the newspapers. Compensation, I call it. The governor of Brixton Prison will have another name for it on his admission book, sir. Angela was on the streets when you met her. Born to it, Angela was. Loved the game. Most of them start because they have to, but not Angela. Met her at the gangway when my ship tied up on the river. I took up with her. And you took up with her again when she returned from Paris with Michael Osborne? His wife. I always said she got her face and name from the angels and the heart from the devil. And you don't know what happened to her? Disappeared from the face of the earth. Well, gentlemen, that's all I can tell you. Whatever could have possessed Michael Osborne to marry such a creature? Because she got her face and her name from the angels. I always remember, Watson, one of the most attractive women I ever met was hanged for murdering three young children for the insurance money. Oh, I feel I want to do something violent when I see a villain like Steiner enjoying the rewards of his skullduggery. Rewards? Well, he ended up by owning that pub through his blackmailing. You really are an amazing fellow, Watson. Though not in yourself luminous, you're an excellent conductor of light. I am. Um, Holmes, whatever do you think became of Angela Osborne? Well, that scoundrel said that she disappeared off the face of the earth. And yet... And yet... 
Well, do you think that Michael Osborne is dead? I never theorize without evidence, my dear Watson. Puts the estate in a bit of a mess. I mean, if the Duke should die, and there was no proof that the elder son was alive or dead. Watch your back. I saw movement in the shadow a moment ago. Soul Holmes, when you take a guest out for the evening, you really do it. My apologies, my dear Watson. Next time, I'll take you to a quiet table at the Café Royal. I should jolly well think so. <laughs> Nothing like a piece of cold steel, eh, Holmes? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a sailor's rest. Oh. And we've walked a mile for that. Yeah, working up an appetite. All the girls are indoors. Scared to come out, they are. <laughs> they must have heard we was in pool. <laughs> well, 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 don't you worry, because Jack and me, we're going to look after you, aren't we, Jack? Yeah! Yeah, don't fight over it, lads. Now then, haven't you girls been told to clear off the streets? i got to earn a living, ain't I? Clear off, lads. Go on. I'll have you inside. Right. Here, miss. Don't you live that way. You coppers are ruining everything. Push off. <laughs> thanks to Jack the Ripper. Thanks to this brutal killer. Yes, thanks to him. The world is watching Whitechapel. And I'll tell you this, it's not the killings by a demented hand that the world finds horrible, no. It's the murder by poverty. The murder by misery. The murder by hunger. In Whitechapel, Whitechapel, the cry of the starving, the moan of the sick. For years, we've tried to get one paragraph into the newspapers to expose what's happening here. I've been myself to the editors, hat in hand. It's not news, they said. <laughs> ah. Well, now it is news. One man has made us news. Yeah! Yeah! We'll have a riot in a minute. He's putting up this murderer as a sort of deliverer of Whitechapel. To seize a defenseless female to stifle her cries and then... Uh, uh, how can anyone do this? 
but someone does. Why? Why? A motive, sir? I'll tell you. His motive is the punishment of Whitechapel as God destroyed Sodom and the city of Gomorrah. Oh, I'll have to shut him up, Mr. Holmes. No, so you'll have to rescue him. It is the social and moral crimes that must be ended in Whitechapel, not just the killings. Yes, it is the dealers in vice and the purveyors of sex that the police must throw their force against, not just the killer. I tell you, there can be no peace in Whitechapel while licensed dens like the Angel and Crown are allowed to cater to the dissolute and the divorced. Minister, the Home Secretary. How's the battle? When I left, the leader of the opposition was still on his feet. He has done what the police couldn't do, found the culprit. You, Prime Minister. Gladstone is informed. <laughs> and I was afraid of that. When he compared the Jack the Ripper murders with the Bulgarian massacres, I could see you were in for trouble. Uh, not the only one. Unless I'm much mistaken, he'll demand the resignation of the Commissioner of Police before the day is out. And if he calls for a vote of no confidence, he might get it. You mean you might have to resign? Well, not I personally, uh, just some of my ministers. Don't you think, Prime Minister, we should go down? Well, uh, as you please, yes. I'm expecting a visit from Mr. Holmes. That charlatan. Uh, Mr. Mycroft Holmes happens to be one of the most indispensable of all the servants of the crown. Well, as long as he doesn't bring in his brother Sherlock. Uh, that is precisely what I propose to ask him to do. Then why not approach him direct? Because your department has antagonized Mr. Sherlock Holmes. He has antagonized my department. Only last week he was grossly offensive to the governor of Pentonville Prison. Mr. Mycroft Holmes. Show him in. Home Secretary, please try to be discreet for once. It isn't going to be easy. Mr. Mycroft Holmes will certainly wish to take charge of the investigation himself. Prime Minister? I think you know the Home Secretary. I knew your predecessor, sir. No doubt I shall soon be making the acquaintance of your successor, unless the police do a good deal better than they're doing at the moment. I have every confidence in the police. That must be, sir, why there's none left in the House of Commons. Uh, Mycroft, I sent for you because you have the tidiest and most orderly brain in Her Majesty's civil service. The Prime Minister, I cannot deny it. Well, that being the case, and knowing that you are at present engaged on the most delicate negotiations concerning the Peruvian copper concession. You wish me to intercede with my brother that he may come to the aid of Scotland Yard and apprehend the Whitechapel murderer. How on earth did you know that? A summons at such an early hour made me suspect that the matter might be a personal one and the presence of the Home Secretary that it might be connected with the Whitechapel murders. The fact that the Peruvian copper concession has already been settled to everybody's satisfaction for the last three days made me suppose it was my brother, not myself, whom you wished to consult on this occasion. I have accordingly arranged to meet him. You mean that you'd already anticipated my request? That, Prime Minister, is my business. My Indian boss! Just look at it, Holmes! I do wish you'd find some other way of solving our cases. My dear Mycroft, this is a surprise. Watson, some sherry. I expected you round last week to consult me about the Manor House case. I thought you might be a little bit out of your depth. No, I solved it. It was Adams, of course. Yes, it was Adams. Yes, I knew that from the start. Thank you. Uh, Mycroft, is this a social call? Oh, yes, yes, purely social, yes. How are you? Very well. Well, now that the social call is over, hadn't we better get down to business? Ah, I perceive you've come from the Prime Minister. Why, Sherlock? It is still forenoon, but you are not at your desk. You're dressed for Buckingham Palace, but the Queen is at Balmoral Castle, and you've already wasted a great deal of time in idle chatter, so obviously your mission is urgent. Now, what does the Prime Minister want? To ask you in confidence, of course, to bring the Whitechapel murderer to justice before he brings down the government. No, but your Any government has... which allows the poverty of Whitechapel deserves, as far as I'm concerned, riddance. 
nor will I become engaged in political maneuvers. And now, my dear brother, have another glass of sherry. Oh, thank you. By the sound of his step, I should imagine our friend Inspector Lestrade has urgent news for us. He's written to us. Written a letter. Try to be coherent, Lestrade. Who has written? Jack the Ripper. Good heavens, Sherlock, you're already involved. A case of detection, Mycroft, always means more to me than any politician's career. Read it, Watson. Hmm. Dear boss, I keep hearing that the police have caught me, but they won't fix me yet. I have to laugh when they look so clever and talk about being on the right track. I am down on whores and won't rest till I do get buckled. I love my work and want to start again. My knife is nice and sharp. I want to get to work right away. Good luck. Yours truly, Jack the Ripper. This letter was sent to the police? The Central News Agency. Good. And they will have it in all tomorrow's newspapers. Mm. Orders from up top, Mr. Holmes. They're quite right for once. Publish this letter, you'll have every crank in the country writing to the papers. But if this letter is not published, Mycroft, there will be more killings. Why do you suppose the murderer sent the letter to the news agency and not to the police? For publication, of course. Perhaps he's sickening of his crimes. Do you think he's bluffing? No. But whatever his motive, and if... If his motive is to create fear, he's trying to achieve it now without further killings. But if we publish, we are adding to the fear and the riot. Precisely what the government is trying to avoid. Moreover, you're asking Her Majesty's ministers to aid and abet Jack the Ripper. If this letter does not appear, Mycroft, he will return to the knife. They must publish. Orders, Mr. Holmes, the letter cannot be published. Then I warn you, put every available man you have on the streets of Whitechapel. Come to view the body of Miss Elizabeth Stride. With your permission. Uh, be careful, the head is almost severed. Well, have you found any clues yet? No, we've scarred every hole in white chapel in the last two days, but nothing. You left no bloodstained garments? No. If it is a he. Woman? The constable who found the body reports having seen a woman in the alley just before. Correction, Lestrade. He reported seeing a woman's shape. What difference? What he said he saw is not what you're saying he saw. That difference. A woman's shape in the fog could be a man dressed in woman's clothes. Really? I should hardly think it is likely that Jack the Ripper... There would... is no pattern of behavior, Lestrade, in a deranged mind. What can you tell us, Dr. Mallet? Each murder is by the same hand. What is your opinion of the knife work here, Doctor? What do you mean? Does it not show surgical skill? Mm -hmm. Then it's the work of a doctor. Anyone with a modicum of medical training could have done it, yes. A medical student, perhaps. It's true these murders are the work of a madman, but a madman with certain medical skills, considerable intelligence and education. Skills, intelligence, education, this. Of course. Take that letter. The punctuation was exact. The grammar and syntax, though cleverly concealed, were the work of an educated man. And to a graphologist, it was obvious that the writing was deliberately scrawled. We must not take the mask for the face, Lestrade. But if you're right, Mr. Holmes, it brings us back to the doctors. Don't be too sure, Lestrade. Oh, well. I'd better be off. I suppose now you'll go and arrest the entire staff of the London Hospital. Would you look for a doctor, Dr. Murray? There is one medical student who will shortly be under suspicion. Oh? Michael Osborne. What's he got to do with that? Medical student who lived in the district, who had good cause to hate prostitutes, who has vanished in a suspicious way. Michael Osborne has got nothing to do with these murders. It may have to be proved that he had nothing to do with them. The newspapers will relish the story of the heir of the Duchy of Shires denying he is Jack the Ripper. We are in victorious England, sir, not Caligula's Rome. At least consider his family and tell me what happened. I have every consideration for his family, Mr. Holmes. That's why I'm saying nothing.
course, I blame myself. I should have refused the Prime Minister's request to call in my brother. In any case, he was already engaged with what was out. Stalemate. I should have realized there was only one person who was capable of solving this problem. Myself. I should have taken charge. I should have ditched the Abyssinian detente. Refused to discuss the details of the Nigerian loan. I should have concentrated on one... For heaven's sake, stop sawing away at that infernal instrument. It was a sad day when Mother gave it to you. A sad day for her. A sad day for you. A sad day for all of us. It's his method, Michael. Right? His method? Method, Watson? This butcher boy has the government, has all of us, on the edge of a knife. Only this morning, three more men were attacked in the streets of London. Carrying Gladstone bags, were they? Carrying Gladstone bags. The well, latest rumor has it that he's a Russian anarchist sent by the Tsar to bring down the government. There's no truth in that. Military intelligence... Is... <coughs> Military intelligence, such as it is, has investigated the rumor and found that there is no truth in it. How long has this recital been going on? Hasn't said a word since yesterday. How long do they usually last? Sometimes for days. Then I am patently wasting my time. What I shall never understand, Sherlock, is why, since you've had that violin with you so long, you have never learnt to play it. Act, Sherlock. Act. Go to the scene of the crime. Use your powers. Interview the people concerned. What was it Mother used to say? Stir your stumps. Don't bother to see me out, Watson. But if during the intermission you should get an opportunity, you might remind my brother that he has never had so great a chance of serving his country or seemed so unaware of his responsibilities or of the intention of the composer when he wrote that tune. <laughs> it's quite right, you know, Watson. No, you've rejoined the human race, have you? I should be in Whitechapel. The fools have not published that letter. There will be another murder tonight. Uh-huh. Come, Watson. You and I will scour the streets together. What for? For the detail that matters. This is hopeless, Holmes. I mean, if Jack the River were just ten feet away, we wouldn't see him. Fog to the murderer is what the jungle is to the tiger, Watson. It conceals him from all until he pounces, and then he is evident only to his victim. So what do we do, Holmes? We must continue. Jack the Ripper will not allow conditions such as these to go unused. He is out now, Watson. like a sport, do you fancy coming up? A couple of shillings will do it. Hang on a minute, I'll throw you down the key. Here you are, darling. Catch. Mind you shut the door behind you, love. Can't take no chances with old Jack the Ripper about. Yeah, do you know something? I ain't been out in the dark for a month now because of him. Come on in then. Come on. That's a lovely coat you've got on, isn't it? Could you make that ten bob for a special, mister? I do want to please you. I haven't had a real gentleman like you since I started. But I don't think I've been on the game that long. I'm proper new, I am.
Watson. Lemon Street Police Station. Get Inspector Lestrade. Tell him to cordon off the area. What are you doing in the hostel? Chasing the shadow. How long have you been here? Since midnight. You've seen no one in the last few minutes. No one passed through the hostel. Here? Yeah. Hello, Edward. Sorry I'm late. Mr. Holmes. I dropped in to see your uncle, Miss Young. Uh, Dr. Murray is resting in the surgery. He asked not to be disturbed. Did he? Come on, I'll take you home. Oh, just, just a minute. Dr. Murray. Oh, Holmes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had a long post-mortem on a poison case today, but time. What are you doing here? Following Jack the Ripper. Here? He eluded me in the mortuary. The mortuary? God, he could have been through the arch into the hostel. He did. We will wait here together for the police. What makes you think that the police are coming here? 
You are the police surgeon. They will bring the body to you. Another prostitute? In the meantime, Dr. Murray, I would welcome the opportunity of a little chat with you. What about? About Michael Osborne. I've told you before that Michael Osborne... Wasn't could... wanted on a suspicion of murder before. What are you talking about? All questions lead back to Michael Osborne's knowledge of surgery. He could not possibly have murdered anybody. Prove it. Don't you think it would be best if you told me the whole story, the full story of the night Michael Osborne found that his wife and Max Steiner were blackmailing his family? You know about that? Michael Osborne was one of the finest young men I've ever met, Holmes. In the six months that he helped me here, I came to respect him as I've respected few other men. You've obviously heard about his wife, a vicious, depraved creature, but he stayed with her in spite of everything. And then one night, she brought Steiner here to this very room, and Michael heard from his wife's mouth their plan of blackmail and how he was to be part of it. What happened? Michael refused to have anything to do with it. There was a quarrel. It ended with Steiner attacking him. He had no chance, Holmes. Not even the sight of her husband being brutally beaten was enough for that woman. She took a bottle of acid from the shelf there. She uncorked it and raised her hand to throw it on Michael's face. But she didn't? It's difficult to know what happened then. Maybe Steiner flung out an arm. Maybe they knocked against her. I don't know. But the acid went into her own face. When Steiner saw the horror of it, he rushed out to get me. Her angel face was a diabolical sight. I did the best I could for her. A week later, Steiner took her away in a closed cab, and I've not seen or heard of her since that day. And Michael Osborne got away. And why weren't the family, the police, informed? He didn't die, Holmes. Not quite. Go on. Finish your story, Dr. Murray. Come and see, Holmes. Finish the story yourself. Wanted Michael Osborne? Here he is. Whether it was Steiner's blows to the head, or whether his mind could suffer no more of the world that his wife had shown him, I don't know. But this is how he's been since that night. How could Lord Carnes allow his brother to remain here in that condition? He doesn't know, Holmes. Not even his own brother could recognize that poor creature as Michael Osborne. Why have you kept this to yourself? You had a duty to inform his father, Murray. What father? The father who disowned him? Threw him out because he wanted to do some good with his life? Instead of wasting it in the pleasures of the aristocracy? He had a right to know. And what about Michael's right? If he has any feelings, he must be happier here than locked in a padded cell for the rest of his days? No, Holmes, no. His life is over. Let the world leave him in peace. That may not be possible. Why not? Surely you can't suspect that poor lunatic. In an investigation, all possibilities have to be considered. Dr. Murray? Yes? Inspector Lestrade sent me for you, sir. Lestrade, my dear fellow, are you not well? You'll never see anything like it this side of hell. What animal could have done this? Prepare yourself for a shock, Dr. Murray. Come, Watson. 
you going to examine the body? There is a more important examination I must make. Trouble, aren't you? No, sir. We're giving it. Uh, I want to see the owner of this doubtful establishment. You've got a nerve. Coming to see me at this time in the morning. I said the owner, not the hired help. Tell Angela Osborne I want to see her. You're not going upstairs. There are several things I may do, Mr. Steiner. Yeah. All right. But give her a chance. Let me warn her. Warn her? You can't just walk in on her. Not the way she is. Right, come up. Please sit down, Mr. Holmes. Dr. Watson. You will forgive the suddenness of my visit and the inconvenience of the hour. Night and day are indistinguishable in these rooms. A lamp turned down is my morning sun, Mr. Holmes. What do you want, Holmes? Out with it. You must excuse Mr. Steiner's lack of hospitality. It is seldom, if ever, that we receive guests. On the contrary, Mr. Steiner's hospitality is noted throughout Whitechapel for the endless lengths he will go to to provide comforts for his guests. And it has been very profitable. I hope you're not going to spoil it. The way you make your money is of no interest to me. Then why are you here? I'm here to ask the lady what she has done with the knife. Knife, Mr. Holmes? The post-mortem scalpel that you removed from the set of surgical instruments you sent me. You are all I expected of you. Give it to him, Max. It is a limited life alone in these rooms, and I spend many hours reading your cases. I am grateful for the excellence of your narrative, Dr. Watson. <laughs> Can you tell an admirer, Mr. Holmes, how you knew I sent the instruments? It had to be someone who wanted to interest me in Michael Osborne. And the writing on the address showed me that it was a woman of little formal education. Of your age, it was really a simple deduction. And how did you know I was here? I was told tonight that you had been... Mutilated and made odious to myself and to the world. Disfigured. It was then obvious why you'd gone into hiding. But why did she remove the scalpel from the case? To be certain to intrigue Mr. Holmes. But we have only your word for that. I do believe the good doctor thinks I am Jack the Ripper. Why should Angela murder those women? Why should she? But of course, Dr. Watson is observant. I hate all women. He knows why. They're all prettier than I am, that is why. The woman with the ugliest face in the world. Want to see? <laughs> But I was beautiful. Hey, eh, Max? Yeah, you were. You can say it, Mr. Holmes, that I hate women. But I'm not your killer. As you can see, I am incapable of even stepping into the street. Why did you hate your husband so much? Hate him? Who told you that? Why, Dr. Murray. Dr. Murray, Michael was a saint. But to me, Michael was a man who tired easily. He seemed unbalanced at times. 
He couldn't take the discipline of medical study. And it was the same with his marriage. He quickly tired of me and sent me back to work. You mean on the streets? His father had cut him off. How do you think we lived? A few shillings I brought him weren't enough for him. So he thought up a way to get money from his brother. His was the blackmailing scheme. Who else? Why do you think he sent Max to young Carfax instead of to his father? Because Michael's father would never give him another penny. Michael's father knew him. Knew him for what he was. A vicious, worthless libertine. Vicious? What do you call a man who throws acid into his wife's face vicious? Because she can bear him no more and is leaving him. Wasn't the man who did that vicious? By God, Holmes. There's a woman of great character. I'm afraid, Watson, you're not probing deeply enough. Her scars extend far beyond the surface. What do you mean? She may well believe her strange story to be the truth. And now, Watson, let us go and pick up the unfortunate Michael Osborne. You mean you know where he is? Come along, Watson. Father, Mr. Sherlock Holmes is here. I was not aware that I had an appointment with him. You must prepare yourself for a shock. Mr. Holmes has brought Michael back. I have forbidden your brother this house, Edward. I have not altered those instructions. But, Father, Michael is... Do not argue with me. Your Grace. You were shown out of my house on your last uninvited visit, Mr. Holmes. I have come back to save your family name. If my elder son has got himself into another mess, you can tell him to get himself out of it. I'm afraid I cannot do that, Your Grace. He is not capable of understanding. Of course he can understand. Your son is a pathetic imbecile, incapable of understanding the smallest intelligent action. He has suffered for his sins. He is outside that door. I've brought him home. Edward. Yes, Father? Have Michael put into his old room. Of course. Do it yourself, Edward. It's better not to serve him. And tell him I shall come and see him presently. Mr. Holmes. Your Grace. How did you find my son? His identity was revealed to me by a doctor in a hostel for the destitute last night. His mind by a lady in a public house, the Angel and Crown, this morning. I am indebted to them both. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. You know, don't you? You know who Jack the Ripper is. Who is he? I'm afraid I must keep that from you a little longer, Watson. But aren't you going to arrest him? Knowing is one thing, proving what we know is another. But we cannot let him roam the streets, Holmes. Indeed we cannot, Watson. But there is work to be done before the final curtain can be brought down. That is what we've been doing this morning, setting the scene and rehearsing for the last act of Jack the Ripper. I wondered what we'd been doing. Anything? No, nothing.
Good evening, Lord Carfax. <laughs> you get out of it, Holmes? You know my methods, Watson. I'm well known to be indestructible. Besides, I wasn't going to miss this excellent partridge. But how did you know that it... How did you know it was Carfax? Oh, Holmes! His medical knowledge. When I dropped the case of instruments in his father's house, he picked it up. You remember that, Watson? Well, natural politeness, I thought. But you, a doctor, did not notice that he immediately put the instruments into their right niches. How odd, I thought. How interesting. A layman might ponder for a moment, but Harfax did not hesitate. But if that's all you had to go on, isn't it an obvious fact that Dr. There's Murray... nothing more deceptive than an obvious fact, Watson. But what was both obvious and revealing was the letter. That harem scarum diatribe in red ink, Holmes, revealing? Precisely. The writer described his murders as his work. I love my work. I want to get to work right away. If his gruesome activity was, as he said it was, his work, he was obviously a man of means who had no need of ordinary employment. Dr. Murray, who works very hard, would have written perhaps pastime. I ruled out Murray. Well, you make it sound very simple. And so it was. When I investigated the Osborne family, I found insanity through four generations. Carfax's reason hung on a thread, that his brother should put the name of Osborne to a common prostitute, and that she should carry that name to the street corners of Whitechapel broke that thread. Carfax was protecting insanely the family name. He had never seen Angela, but it seemed logical to him, mad to us, that he could kill her by a process of elimination. He searched for her with his knife from one prostitute to the next. But Lestrade, uh, the police. Lestrade and the police do not know the identity of Jack the Ripper. No useful purpose will be served in disclosing his identity now. The Osborne family have suffered enough as it is. Lestrade has his three buckets of ash, but we will keep the name. Parcel for you, Mr. Holmes. Postmarked Nottingham. Game's afoot again. This hat is three years old. The flat brim curled at the edges came in then. It belongs, Watson, to a man who has suddenly gone down in the world. He's middle-aged, goes out little, and has grizzled hair which has been cut in the last few days. <laughs> 